Great. So I think it's a good time for us to go ahead and get started with our first speaker. So we have Stefan Zambon, who is the CTO of Elk. And uh, some of you may be asking what Elk is. Uh, Elk Audio OS is a Linux-based operating system for embedded devices that combines excellent real-time performance with the ease of software development. Stefano's talk is titled, Don't Fear the Hardware, Turn Software Pro Plugins into Hardware Instruments with Elk. And I'm going to pass it over to Stefan now. So please give him a warm welcome. Thank you, Joshua. And uh, uh, you did already the introduction for me, so I, I have to say much less. Um, but first important, I wouldn't want to have given such a talk uh, until very recently because uh, I would just feel ashamed. A, it's a blameless self-promotion, shameless self-promotion. But uh, right now we have been trying to open up and uh, give away a lot of that for free. We released open source uh, uh, last year. And uh, right now we even don't even make money on hardware. We support third party, very inexpensive hardware. So I feel like that, uh, well, I'm not doing self-promotion. I'm just giving the opportunity to people that, hey, you want to play with uh, hardware, you're maybe a plugin developer. You don't have to give us literally a set, neither in software or hardware. And you can just play. And I hope that uh, some people will try to, to get Raspberry Pi and uh, maybe play with it after this talk. So I... I'm not going to talk much in theory, just give you like a very broad overview of uh, what are the flavors of embedded uh, development and where Elk fix, fits in the space. And then since uh, I was feeling brave, I brought some toys with me. I don't know if you can see them with, with the camera. And I will try to do, to do a sort of a live demo, which is something that... Uh, uh, Presentation 101 always tell you that you shouldn't do it, but uh, we'll see how <laughs> how it will go. So uh, maybe can start my screen sharing. Uh, can, can you can you see my screen? Yep. I oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so let me just put this one. Back and uh, here. All right. So let's see if you want to do some kind of physical product, hardware product. Uh, uh, there are many challenges compared, especially if you want to do something that's abstract, something that uh, you want to bring on stage. Uh, it's robust, uh, doesn't break, uh, and works on very low latency. And the problem is that you have uh, two conflicting requirements. On one hand, you really want, especially for effects, uh, you want something extremely low latency, but even synthesizer, you want to get uh, the most out of uh, inexpensive CPUs. And on the other hand, you want to have something that supports fancy display, new hardware, network connectivity. And these are uh, two things quite uh, point into different direction. Um, to tell you the, the old school solution, and I kind of worked with this thing and it was really painful from a developer point of view, uh, using DSP chips uh, or even other solutions that are basically very close to the metal, like uh, programming without a, an OS or a very thin layer like a free RTOS or FPGA. I mean, all those kind of solution they are wonderful in terms of performance, but uh, for the developers, uh, it's quite painful to uh, not just write software, but maintain it. Uh, and uh, especially if you want to man maintain it over the years, uh, forward compatibility is a serious issue. So you have uh, uh, this very fancy DSP that's out today, tomorrow they make a new model and oh, you suddenly realize you have to rewrite uh, a lot of your code. And uh, yeah, FPGAs, bare metal, they're pretty much sometimes a little bit easier, but on the on the same hand. Then there's a, a embedded Linux, which is, I mean, right now it runs, uh, your car is probably running a ton of uh, embedded Linux, especially for the 
for the display the touch screen part uh, and uh, in your house you will have uh, several devices these days that runs linux uh, and it's great from <clears throat> developer perspective um, but uh, the issues is that uh, by default uh, you don't get like really a good performance i mean with the same advantage of having something similar as a pc you also get uh, the disadvantages of having a pc with the scheduler that gets into your, your way and furthermore if you have something like a raspberry pi you there are distribution available for raspberry pi for example raspian many others but you can't use those for making uh, something that you can bring on stage i mean they are they are kind of uh, a direct portal for distribution for your computer and just make an example it's quite hard to make an update system that is power of safe you want that whenever you you cut the power uh, the device is uh, expected to boot up again in a working condition and those things are not uh, easy with uh, a normal uh, raspberry distribution so what is elk elk is a uh, a custom Linux distribution, and we use this tool. It's called uh, uh, Yocto, and their motto is: "It's not a Linux distribution; it builds one for you." So with Yocto, we are able to shape uh, every detail uh, of Elk. We can make uh, uh, developer images uh, so that you have all the tools, or we can make production images. That we can generate cross-compiling SDK so you can get this uh, SDK on your computer and you can just rebuild plugins and uh, send them to the boards and so on. The, the, the secret sauce behind the performance, which is also a solution used by Bella, which is another project on a, on a big old one black, is a Xenomai, which is a, a framework for real-time computing uh, it's uh, like the strongest flavor of real-time linux it's um, not as easy to set up as uh, other approaches like a preempt rp but by far it gets uh, the best performance ever we can run the system uh, up to less than one millisecond analog to analog audio I mean, the both I have set up here, they're running at 16 samples buffer size at 48 kilohertz on a, on a simple Raspberry Pi. And uh, the other thing that uh, we take a care about in Elk are uh, interfacing with Linux. So, you know, everything from network setup, uh, having bridges to Bluetooth low energy. And then we try to include all the batteries that you might need to develop uh, any kind of audio products, be it like a synthesizer, drum machine, uh, an effects unit. Uh, we, we try to generalize uh, so that uh, it should work uh, for all these use cases. And at the core, we have a course that can host uh, VST2, VST3 plugins, and LV2 plugins at the low level. And then at a higher level, we work on you know, supporting some frameworks and other languages. So you can take, for example, uh, C sound and generate a plugin that runs in Elk. You can take uh, Faust uh, and uh, in one click uh, you you have something from Faust code to Elk. Or uh, we support frameworks like Juice. So if you have a plugin written in Juice, it's extremely easy to to get it running on Elk. Um, there are some boards. There's a control voltage. There's a gate if you want to connect to modular or or those kind of uh, synthesizers. Uh, there's able to link if you want to synchronize over uh, Wi-Fi, and as I mentioned, the, the everything is open source. So if you go to our GitHub page, we have like uh, quite a high number of repositories for all the components of the system, plus uh, example documentation. So feel uh, feel free to take uh, take a look, uh, and uh, we also provide binaries releases uh, if you go everywhere in the in the release uh, section of our repositories that's where we put the, the binary to download okay in uh, terms of hardware uh, so the we uh, we support several cpus uh, actually we are pretty scalable 
but the, uh, the one that we uh, openly support uh, for the open source lead that anyone can get is uh, for the uh, Raspberry Pi. And until a few weeks ago, we only had uh, this board that you could buy from our store. And it's very nice uh, if you want to prototype uh, a generic hardware instrument. It has uh, uh, a lot of, of uh, analog uh, audio inputs and outputs you can turn some of the inputs and the channels to be control voltage with some jumpers. And we also package like, uh, you can attach up to 16 uh, knobs or faders and 32 digital inputs and 32 digital outputs. So you can make LED rings, uh, buttons, uh, uh, and prototype your, your instrument. Uh, Besides the Raspberry Pi, uh, we have usually for private companies, we also support other CPUs like uh, uh, Intel Atom CPUs, uh, IMX7, IMX8, uh, uh, SD M32 MP1, which is uh, the first microprocessor by SD. It's uh, quite small, uh, but uh, pretty efficient in terms of uh, power. And But for the open source release, it's mostly uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 where we give the support. And the 4 is quite a new kit in the block uh, and uh, quite a pretty performance uh, CPU. And yeah, the last thing where I said I feel less, uh, uh, less, uh, uh, I don't feel uh, shame in doing promotion is that we just released a couple of weeks ago support for this Hi-Fi Berry, which is a third party sheet. It's uh, probably the best compromise in terms of price uh, and uh, and features for uh, for a shield that you that you can have both input and output. I mean, it's not uh, like a pro audio. You have a mini jack and RCA, but still, it's a decent shield. And you, we also support the um, output only version. And you, if you buy on uh, on the stores around the world, this thing uh, you can get up uh, a system with the Pi Four and uh, one of these shield uh, for less than one hundred euros. And uh, with the Pi 4, you can run quite uh, a significant number of plugins on it. And talking about plugins, uh, we, uh, as a part of our open source effort, we also have a, a community plugins repository where we took like, a, you know, quite a lot of uh, open source plugins available. And since most of the time it, in our case, it's just uh, if you have a CMake or a Make build system, you just need to source our SDK script and uh, click Make, and you're done. So we were able to get these uh, 500 plugins uh, available. There's uh, everything from uh, some decent synthesizer like OBXD, uh, Dexter. There's uh, some nice effects uh, collection like Guitar X, uh, the Air Windows. Uh, so you and uh, you find the binaries for both the Pi three and Pi four. So you and that's actually what I'm going to show in the rest uh, as the example. I'm not going to uh, show you C plus plus code. I'm assuming you have uh, some C plus plus code available. I'm showing you how to configure a system to make a product out of that. Uh, first, just a very quick look at the overall architecture of the system, and I will so that. You will have some uh, some names uh, that I will use later in the configuration during the demo. So these are the it's a diagram. It's color coded, and uh, it has a the shows the software the main software blocks or components of the system. And the blue components are like Linux or Xenomai parts that we didn't any originally write, uh, we modify, we patch, we configure, and we package in distribution. And at the core, there's uh, uh, this uh, dual kernel architecture, which is a uh, Xenomai basically runs uh, two operating systems at the same time. You have a proper real-time operating system that guarantees hard real-time performance. And then you have a normal Linux kernel that runs on the same memory space. And we wrote a driver stack for, for this architecture, at least for, for the stuff that needs to be real time. And uh, the 
good thing is that uh, we, uh, from your perspective, you don't see any of this uh, dual kernel separation. We abstract everything from you. That's how you're able to get the plugin, recompile it, uh, and just make it run. Uh, at the user space, uh, the main, most important component is Sushi. It's our little DAW, um, more than a, a recording uh, software, it's actually live host. So think more main stage than logic. So it can uh, host uh, plugins on parallel tracks. So you can have uh, uh, quite a long uh, chain of plugins. You, you can interact with MIDI devices and internally it uses two libraries that we developed, Twine, uh, to access the multi-core capabilities of the SOC and Rasp, which access the audio driver. And Sushi, the only thing that lacks compared to main stage or similar things is uh, it doesn't have a GUI. And that was by choice. So the way you control Sushi is uh, statically with JSON files and dynamically there's an IPC architecture. It's uh, both open sound control and the gRPC, which is the Google RPC framework. And uh, in the in the case of uh, um, if if you're not familiar with gRPC, it's uh, uh, something that Google opens uh, has been used internally for like forever, and they open sourced it uh, not too many years ago. And the great feature of gRPC is that you name a programming language, you will find support uh, for gRPC. Uh, Python, Lua, uh, Node.js, uh, Go. So in the case of Python and C++, uh, we even provide client libraries. So you don't even have to actually learn gRPC. Uh, if you use uh, Python and C++, you can just use one of our client libraries. And uh, in the case of Python, it will feel that you can control Sushi like it's uh, in a pure Pythonic way. So you can query Sushi about getting, hey, what are the plugins that you have? Uh, uh, please change a, a plugin parameter and so on. Uh, the equivalent of Sushi, if you need to handle stuff like knobs, uh, faders, buttons, LEDs, is Sensei. And Sensei, it kind of abstracts away all this physical hardware. So it's uh, purely declarative. So you just write a JSON file and you tell us and say on the, on the pin number 28 on the board, I have connected an LED and on pin number 40, I have a, a button. And then so say will generate messages and you can then uh, interact with the things. So uh, what you need to provide if you want to make a product with that, and that's what uh, I'm going now to show in uh, during the demo, you need to provide uh, uh, a few things. Any kind of DSP processing has to be in the form of an audio plugin, and you need to load it into Sushi. Uh, if you have a display like touchscreen or even this board here, I have a small OLED display, you need to write uh, a GUI in a separate process than Sushi. And then you need some kind of a main application that basically glues the logic together. So you listen to events coming from Sensei, for example, and then you you send commands to Sushi or what, whatever. And this main application in these examples I'm uh, showing now, it's written in Python using that alpha library, but you can literally write it in everything that talks uh, either gRPC or OSC. All right, so now time to, to be brave. Uh, Joshua, can you still give me a thumbs up if you see my terminal? Yep, I can see you. All right. Okay, so uh, let me. So now I have turned on the two boards, and uh, the setup I have, uh, I actually have uh, the first board. Uh, so it's uh, the Alt Pi with a controller board uh, that you touch on top, uh, and it basically comes with some faders. Uh, some uh, audio, audio connection exposed, some buttons, a rotary encoder. And uh, I'm using a tiny fraction of the audio connectivity because I will just use this board as to make a, a very simple synthesizer. 
and I'm getting the audio output from here and putting it into this uh, hi-fi berry board, which would be like my stomp out pedal. And uh, I will run uh, both sushi and uh, the hi-fi berry doesn't run sensei because uh, you, we don't have access to extra pins for, for the sensor. But uh, we will try to get everything set up and show what's, what, how does the configuration file looks like. So let me, uh, the boards are connected over Wi-Fi. So if uh, I should be able to, uh, to SSH, let me get this a, a little okay, larger. I su should be able to SSH into the board over Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi should be here, yes. All right, I'm lucky. And uh, I'm also uh, playing with the fire because this 0 0.8.0 is not released yet. We, it's coming up sooner uh, with some new performance improvements and uh, more flexibility in Sushi configuration. So I'm also uh, showing you a little bit of a preview of what's happening. So I, I put some uh, configuration file here. So I have a, a JSON file that is a configuration for Sushi and it's quite a minimal one. I just uh, say, hey, I want to make a synthesizer. What's the minimum I need to make a synthesizer? And that's it. It's like this 30 lines of JSON. Uh, you just need to tell what's the track layout. Uh, and uh, of course, there's uh, plenty more uh, information you can throw in this JSON. Uh, but the very minimum you need to tell, which is the plugin. In this case, I'm using a pretty good open source plugin. It's the uh, OBXD uh, uh, synthes synthesizer from the, the Disco DSP version, which is a quite reasonably sounding Oberheim clone. And also quite a CPU, CPU demanding. Uh, let me close this one, sorry. And uh, so I'm, uh, I will, uh, uh, that's just the JSON file. And the way I'm going to connect it, uh, uh, so we prepare, I'm not going to show you the sensei configuration because since we know what is the uh, sensor layout, the fader and the LEDs and buttons of this board, we prepared uh, like a sensei configuration. It's not going to change for this board. If you make your own order, you will need to change uh, the JSON. But in my case, I can just start uh, Sensei and uh, it, it will just uh, work uh, and uh, communicate with uh, the rest of the system. And finally, I, I have this uh, Python application that does the product logic. And as you can see, it's 80 lines of code, including including the, the white space. So it's, uh, of course, quite hard coded for this OBXD plugin. And it makes use of uh, an helper class that we also provide for, for this Blackboard. But you basically pass callbacks. So what, what handles when you move one fader? What handles when you move a button? And then you can, uh, I'm using the add pie to communicate to Sushi. And I'm doing things like, uh, hey, let's set the parameter whenever I move a fader. So when I receive parameter on the fader, I will tell a Sushi to change uh, the relative parameter. And I have mapped uh, four faders. I just arbitrarily mapped the cutoff for resonance attack and release. And uh, it's also going to show uh, like uh, a small uh, a small value on the display. So on the OLED display, it will show me which parameter I'm controlling and the value. And when I'm going to press a button, well, we'll just get, uh, I just map uh, like a simple C scale and I will make this button act as a small MIDI keyboard. All right. I'm just sorry that since I have uh, a change setup, uh, I can't show you easily uh, right now, this one and make it sounding because I need to start the, the hi fi berry as well. Otherwise, the audio will not come through here. So, here uh, I have uh, so we have an audio in and audio out, and uh, I 
put a couple of plugins. Uh, and in this case, uh, I added also some audio inputs to the track. And I added another, another couple of nice plugins, so um, quite uh, spew demanding. The first one is uh, the Tamper Distortion plugin, which is uh, quite uh, another quite nice, uh, uh, not your uh, everyday distortion made from uh, the 101 uh, examples. And the second one is the Zeta Reverb with uh, uh, feedback delay networks that counts uh, with Faust and it's pretty high quality reverb. And what I'm going to show and run now whoop, is uh, actually how to control these uh, from another device. So I, uh, we have a, a simple application we, uh, that one of our guys made with um, uh, Qt and Python. So it's a few lines of code. And uh, so the gRPC interface, you can, of course, use it from different devices. So if I run Sushi from here, all right. And this board is running with 16 samples, uh, buffer size. So the annual to annual round trip latency on this guy, it's something like 1.4 millisecond, uh, like as, as measured. And uh, if I run here, this, uh, this GUI, all right. So I can even, and this GUI is a completely agnostic in terms of plugins. So it actually queries the sushi. It asks, hey, which plugins do you have uh, there? You have a temper, you have a reverb, and it shows, like your host does, shows a list of parameters. I'm going to put both of them in bypass now so that we can hear them. And now it's uh, the very moment. So I'm, uh, uh, let me see if that this is okay. So here I just realized. Oh, and, uh, okay. When I powered off for the power, I, I lost the connection on 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 this guy. So I I turn it off. Uh, and unless it, if he loses the Wi-Fi again. I should be able to connect soon. All right, at least this one uh, connects over the Wi-Fi. So I was here. So we said uh, here we have these objects, the example. And uh, how we do it with time, All right? And. Uh, here I'm launching, uh, I need to start Sensei. And of course, when you make a product, all these tasks can be automated so you can just power on your system and everything runs. And finally, I can start that the main application in, in Python. All right, okay. So it looks good. Uh, let's... Uh, you're going with the current setup that they have. Or I think you're probably going to lose my voice now for a moment, or unless I play with Zoom because I'm using my Zoom microphone. I need either to play or or to or, or to speak because the zoom and that doesn't work with either way. So I'm just now opening up again on the GUI and uh, try to play with some parameter of the GUI. So nothing fancy, but just to show you how you uh, it's really easy just with a, a few lines of Python code and JSON to to get a low latency setup. So. That's... <laughs>
because uh, yeah, I think I'm a, I'm a quite in time. I just wanted to give you this very quick tour and uh, live demo. And now, if uh, anyone has uh, like a Q and A session, maybe I don't know, Josh, if you want to start asking questions, if they are coming from uh, whatever live stream you have. Yeah, so there are quite a few questions actually. <clears throat> so, uh, so the first question is from Shakat, and the question is: Is the UI on the host's PC? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the next question is uh, from Pete, and he was wondering if you could do uh, a comparison of Elk to the Bella board. Are they similar or are they different, and how how so? Uh, okay, so for for the first question, so this is a, a Python Qt application. It's done with, uh, I should have the code here, let me. And it's, uh, I mean, nothing fancy, but just to show that uh, if you have your own GUI, uh, we did it also on mobile device, anything, you just need to, to talk with gRPC, and it's very straightforward to communicate to the board using the gRPC. And right now, this is like a, a quite a quick and dirty. It's like a, also not a, a very big a Python application. We're going to release this soon, actually. Uh, it, it's not out yet, uh, but it's more, we think of it more like an example. This, hey, that's how you can make a, a generic UI. And uh, the, the cool thing is that it's actually, um, you can start from an empty configuration sushi, so you can add tracks, you can uh, dynamically load plugins, do stuff like that. Uh, regarding the Bela, uh, so yeah, there are some uh, some differences, and uh, Bela is a is a great system actually, and uh, it's uh, uh, wonderful for uh, for makers for prototyping, and I think so. The the differ the main difference is on the target user base focus. So I guess uh, that Bela is uh, is excellent if you want uh, if you're like uh, an artist and you want to make an installation, and on the other hand, there's a uh, differences uh, in the development approach. So with Bella, you have an IDE, and you're supposed to write one application, like it's more like a monolithic uh, approach. While as you've seen, and usually you write something using, uh, I don't know, your Super Collider or, or, or all the other languages supported by Bella. Uh, with Elk, it's more this modular approach. So you put together various pieces of DSP in a format of various plugins. And uh, you write another application that is a separate process, and then you glue you glue the things together. And uh, um, Elk, we and we also have this equivalent of uh, like a, a, an audio engine that cost. So it's not just for making one single application that sounds respond to input, but it's something more. Uh, let's say you want to make a, a workstation, a synthesizer workstation. And then there's also the difference on uh, uh, simply the CPU. So the, the Bella, the pickle board, you don't have much CPU power on, on that uh, uh, Texas Instruments uh, that's running there. It's a single core. I don't remember how many gigahertz. Cortex A7, if I believe. And why we have this, I mean, especially with the Raspberry Pi 4, it's, uh, it's like way, way more powerful. So you can run like a complex, uh, uh, DSP units on it. Great, thanks for that. Another question is, can you tell us when the boards will be available again? So it looks like they're sold out on the website. <laughs> uh, we, we, which ones, uh, the our boards, the Elk Pie or, or the... Uh, so oh. one of the questions was about the Elk Pie kit uh, okay. and not sure about the other, I'm not sure what the other person was asking about. Uh, so yeah, we actually just sold out uh, almost uh, pretty much every last one of them. And uh, the thing we we needed to make a new production run, which is not easy these days, as you can imagine. You know, uh, some of everything is slowed down. Uh, but I will uh, I will try. I mean, if there is a lot of interest in buying them, uh, and uh, we are able to, uh, maybe we can set up like something a pre-order page so that you can tell us your interest. We might be able to speed up the order. So um, uh, we'll give you an update later. 
And then the Hi-Fi Berry, uh, I know that this one is also running low, but at least it's available on many different stores. So some people are able to get it from other sources. And uh, not officially, so we don't uh, officially support it, but there are people that have been able to use uh, uh, the same driver we provide for the Hi-Fi Berry with uh, other uh, audio hats for the, uh, for the Raspberry Pi. And the last I checked, there's like three or four of them, at least, that have uh, the same codec, so our driver just works. Great. And there's another question from Wave Sequencer asking if the support for VST3 is solid for Elk OS. I, I think it's a, it pretty is. We have this uh, collaboration with uh, Steinberg. And uh, uh, the the moment where I mean we still don't have one hundred percent of uh, everything. Uh, but you, you can check the code base. And for us, the moment where we got it right was when we worked together with Stanford doing uh, hosting one of their plugins. That's when we figure out okay, those, those are all the things that because they were using all the features in VST three. Great. And Scott asks, does the Hi-Fi Berry support? offer any balanced inputs and outputs uh no n not on this one uh, yet uh, it's uh, just unbalanced so you have a mini jack uh, and rca a mini jack for the input and rca for the outputs uh, that's what i can see at the moment so you will need to maybe use connect it to the uh, the ibox or to a mixer probably great and we have one more question, which is, uh, was it the Elk Pie that was used in Matt Bellamy's guitar? And that's from Giovanni. Uh, no, it was not. It was uh, an Intel because we didn't have uh, the final version of the Elk Pie. We, we used uh, one Intel board there, uh, one of our Intel boards. Great. Great. That, uh, so that wraps everything up. Looks like that's all the questions. Thank you once again, Stefano, for... You're a great talk. You're welcome.